Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. So here we are with the February update just released uh, for Rust with a bunch of changes uh, and new additions to the actual electrical system. So before we get into that, I just wanted to quickly say thank you to everyone that supported the series so far. The support that I've received has exceeded my expectations and it's really, really cool to see all the feedback that, that I've been getting both on the YouTube videos themselves and uh, in a lot of the Discord chats that I'm in. So, um, yeah, it's it's really, really awesome. I really appreciate it, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of the content. I've got some other things in the works at the moment, some gameplay videos. Uh, I just played a duo series with uh, a friend of mine and um, some pretty funny and, and interesting things happen on that. It was a bit of a struggle, but um, hopefully you guys enjoy the videos when they come out. So, let's get into this. I just wanted to quickly cover um, the new change to the memory cell, which we covered in the last episode. Um, it's had one more little toggle put in the side, which is funny enough, called a toggle. I should say an input put on the side. So essentially what it does is it features as both the reset and the set feature, but having something hooked up to it, um, like it suggests, simply toggles it. So we understood from the previous episode that if um, you switched um, the power from the set to the reset, it would change which output the memory cell was outputting through. The toggle does exactly the same thing, but in a toggle kind of fashion. So I've got it hooked up pretty much the same as we did in the previous episode. I'm just gonna step on the pad, it sets the memory cell to 1, but instead of us having to get power go into the reset feature to go back to the inverted input or set the memory cell to 0, I just have to step on the memory pad there. Pretty simple. If you don't really understand how this works, then you may not have seen the previous episode. Go back and watch episode 2. However, we're going to move on to the next component. Okay, so... While we're talking about the memory cell, I have here one of the new components which is called the RAND switch, or short for random switch, because it is based on chance. I have it hooked up in a similar way to what we did the memory cell. I have the uh, pressure pad, sorry, hooked up to the set feature of the RAND switch, and then I have a timer hooked up to the reset function, which I have set to one just so I can quickly reset the circuit. I have a power source going into the bottom of the RAND switch and then outputting into a display just so we can have a visual representation as normal. So what happens when I step on this pressure pad is it sends a signal to the set feature but essentially it has a 50-50 chance of turning on or setting to 1 just like the memory cell does or not doing anything at all. So that's where the randomness comes into it. So if I step on, you can see nothing happens. I'll try again. I'll step on, and again, nothing happens. I'll step on again, and again, nothing happens. And then finally, I'll step on, and it decides to let power pass through. So you can see that this was fairly random, and although I said a 50-50 chance, it took my fourth try to actually get it to work. Of course, if I then hit this, it sends a signal which is not random to the reset switch, I believe, and it turns it back off. Alrighty guys, so here we are with pretty much all the new components that they've added. Um, in this particular section, they've added eight new components. This is, of course, excluding the RAND switch that we've already covered. So, this is a circuit that I've just hooked up to show you guys how it works. But first, let's just have a look at the new components. So, these are pretty much base defense. They could be used for other purposes, um, which I'm sure some people have already come up with. I've seen a couple of lighthouse designs and stuff like that with people playing around with the possibilities, but uh, they're much bigger than that. So we've got a simple flash of light. It doesn't really get much simpler than this. When it receives power, it flashes blue. Um, now here in Australia, I'm not sure about other countries, um, there's a lot of, uh, especially on like businesses and stuff like that, 
they have a security system and usually above the door or something like that there's a blue flash of light this one looks very similar to that uh, when it when it's actually flashing we have the siren light now don't be fooled by the name it doesn't actually make a noise but it is a very uh, bright red light that emits and it flashes around similar to the flash of light here we also have an audio alarm so if you compare this to uh, either one of these then you have both visual and audible uh, recognition that something's going on we also have the HB HF sensor so this stands for heartbeat breathing humidity and footstep sensor essentially it detects if something alive is near or it's pretty much just detecting humans in this case so what's interesting about it is the pass-through is equal to the number of humans detected in a 20 meter sorry 20 meter radius with line of sight so that means it can't be placed on the other side of a wall and still detect people so essentially it needs to be in full view so you can configure it with a hammer and we'll go through that in just a moment so we've also got an RF broadcaster an RF receiver an RF transmitter, which is a handheld object, and then an RF pager. So these are all wireless components of the electrical system, the first ones that Rust has introduced. So I'm going to use these in a moment, so I'm going to put them in the hotbar here. And I've set up a couple of these already, so we're going to have a look. So, let's have a look at this HBHF sensor first. So you mount it on a wall or wherever you like and what it's doing, it's sensing essentially any players that are nearby within, like it said, a 20 meter radius. It has to have line of sight. So it said it's a little bit configurable. So if I have a hammer in my hand and I hold down E, I can either pick it up or use one of these two options. So I can exclude or include authorized players so I can also exclude others as well so people who aren't authorized on the TC now for base defense you wouldn't want to exclude others this is probably the main function that people are going to use it for however like I said there are apl other applications for it most of the time if you're using it for base defense you probably wouldn't want to uh, include authorized but Let's just do it for this example in a moment. So, what I've done, since the HB HF sensor outputs, depending on the amount of players, so if there was one player in the vicinity, the output coming from it would be one. Now, this is great if you have it hooked up to a display and you want to see how many people are outside. However, maybe you don't want to see that. So what I've done here is I've connected an electrical branch here. I've got a little bit of power going into the HBHF sensor. But then I've got the rest of the power going into an AND switch. Now, if you remember how an AND switch works, if both inputs receive power, then whatever is the larger power source, which will happen to be what's coming from the power out of the electrical branch in this case, that is what it's going to output out its power out, which I've then got connected to a whole bunch of other components, which may be the better way for you to hook something up. But if it's not, go ahead and hook it up however you want. So what's going to happen when I exclude myself? Well, we'll find out in just a second. We'll run through a couple of the other things. I've got the flasher light up here. I've got the siren light here, and they're all hooked up to this splitter. I've also got the speaker, I've got another electrical branch just so I could have an extra outlet because I've got a broadcaster here, but we'll go through that in just a moment. What I'll do, I'll exclude, or sorry, include authorized players, so that'll include myself. So when I turn this on, it should now activate. Now, I've set this to a frequency of 5858 megahertz. My RF transmitter is running on it, my pager is running on it, and you can see now that the HBHF sensor is set off and being extremely loud, the pager is going off, 
the lights going off and the speakers going off. So I'm going to exclude authorized players, which will allow us to be able to have our ears back. So what happened? Pretty simple. Power out was activated here because the HB HF sensor was detecting a player in front of it. The AND switch was being activated and therefore allowing power to flow to these other components. Now, why have I set up this broadcaster here? I haven't seen anything else hooked up. Well, what I've gone and done is I've actually put a receiver over here with another speaker and another flasher light hooked up to it. It's got its own power source. These circuits are not connected whatsoever, except wirelessly. Now, you might have a little bit of a compound. You may even have a second base. Now, as far as I'm aware, the RF transmitting frequency works just server-wide. So no matter how big or how small the map is, if you are running on a particular frequency, then you can send a signal across the whole map. So maybe you're at a farm base or something like that you've set up in a resource rich area. Maybe you've got a particularly large compound if you're a big base or sorry a big clan and you've got a big base. Someone is sneaking into a particular part of your compound or someone's going near your base and you're at your farm base like I mentioned. Now if we say include authorized so this circuit activates while I'm here then you'll see automatically the light over there is going off so what's happening is this broadcaster is receiving power it's sending its wireless frequency over to the receiver there and I can't actually walk over there without turning the circuit off but it's activating that speaker and that light so this is pretty handy for all kinds of different scenarios. So additionally, the RF transmitter here can activate that receiver over there. So if I... <laughs> okay, if I press that, then it activates over there. Now you're not going crazy. That is actually a mobile... Uh, interference sound that's coming through. They added that just as a sound effect when I release, then it goes away. Now, this whole time, you've noticed that my pager has been going off. I actually have it set to silent at the moment, but let's turn it back on and see what happens. Pretty simple. It's either set to vibrate mode, just like your phone, or it's on loud. Pretty simple. So I hope this makes sense. There's a bunch of new components put into the game which means there's a whole new set of possibilities. I wanted to provide this video before the next one in the series came out just to give you guys an idea of how these work if you haven't had a time to play around with them yet either on the main branch or staging branch I prefer to wait till they come out on main branch because even in the last few hours there's been changes to them before the update came out so just like usual if you have any questions whatsoever hit me up in the comments however if you didn't like the video hit that thumbs down i appreciate the feedback either way however if you did like it smash that thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell if it even works anymore but whatever subscribe to me on twitter the link will be in the description below and at the moment i also have a discord in the works i'm not sure exactly when i'll release it to the public i'm trying to get it set up at the moment but we'll have a discord set up so you guys can join that uh contribute and see when all the new content will be coming out otherwise in the meantime take care guys the next episode will be out in a couple of days